Welcome class to lesson 6.6 .6 on investigating models of sinusoidal functions. In this lesson, pretty much one of the biggest things we're going to be doing is coming up with an equation. The next section involves with a lot of word problems, so that's why we're going to first make sure we know how to make equations of sinusoidal functions so that we can do some word problems later on. To recall, y equals a f a k at x minus d plus c. That's our base function with all the transformations. f is your function, in this case sine or cos x. a is the vertical stretch compression or reflection in the x-axis, also the amplitude. Remember, how do you find the amplitude? Maximum value minus minimum value divided by 2. Okay, and actually, before I continue, here it says y equals, because remember, the amplitude is a y value, but if you want to think of it, you can also think of it as a, or a equals, because that'll work as well. Then k is a horizontal stretch of compression and reflection in the y-axis, which helps us find the period. The period is 360 divided by k, or k is equal to 360 over the period. d is the horizontal translation, or phase shift in degrees, while c is the vertical translation, the equation of the axis, and it's given as y equals maximum plus minimum divided by 2. So that way, depending what information you're given, you can do this. If it tells you the middle, then you have your equation already, or equation of the axis. But if it just tells you a maximum and minimum, you can use it to find the equation of the axis. Finding an equation of a sinusoidal function works the same as with other functions. We can use the formulas for the amplitude, equation of the axis, and period to find a, c, and k. By using properties of the sinusoidal functions, or substituting in a point that isn't on the axis, you can find the value of d, as well as the sine of a. The problem with using a point on the axis is it's not necessarily going to work, especially if the period has changed, for example, or sorry, if, yeah, if the period's changed, but then you've still translated it in such a way that one of the points ends up on an axis, doesn't work too well. And as well, if it's on the axis, it's on the middle, so you can't tell if the point is then going up or down, which won't help with the reflection. And now we're going to start with some examples. Example one, we have this table of values. So we can start by finding the amplitude. You can see we have 17, 13, and 21. So clearly 13's are minimum and 21's are maximum. A equals max minus min divided by two, which is 21 minus 13 divided by two. 21 minus 13 is eight over two, which is four. Meanwhile, our C max plus min divided by 2, 21 plus 13 divided by 2, which is 17. In this case, I didn't show the y equals solely because we're looking for the c value, not the equation of the axis, even though they technically are the same thing. And luckily, 17 ends up being our equation of the axis in the middle and ends up being this point that we have in our table. It's going to make our period very easy to see. If we look at our period, where does it end? It ends at 540. Where does it start? It starts at negative 180. So we're going to do 540 minus negative 180. That's going to give us 720. So our period is 720. Remember, when you're measuring, when you start at zero, it's easy. You just go from zero to your end amount. But if you're starting at another number other than zero, even on a ruler, then you have to subtract out that part. Same thing here. Our k ends up being 360 over period, or 360 over 720, which is equal to a half. Now, how do we find d? We can just think about this a bit. For sine, we know 
the period starts on the equation of the axis. And we said that was negative 180. So D is negative 180. But what happens? From that 17, it's now going down to 13. But sine usually goes up. So that means our A is reflected. So it's not just 4, it's going to be negative 4. If you wanted to, you could have said, I'm going to use positive 180 for D. Because it's periodic, it'll work. If you used positive 180, you see the next point is the maximum, which means A would have stayed positive. So you could have used that. As for cosine, cosine starts at the maximum, which is at 360, but we could also start it at its minimum. And what's the minimum? Zero. So we'll start at zero. But if cosine starting at its minimum instead of its maximum, that means once again, it is reflected. So it's negative four again. Had you used 360 for D, then A would have been positive four still. As well, if you wanted to, you could sub in one of these points and then isolate for D. So you could use the equation Y equals A sine bracket K bracket X minus D plus C. We have A, K, and C. You have them listed above, A being 4 at this point still, because you haven't changed anything. And then you'd get, and then you'd use a point x, y, and solve for d. And you could do the same with cosine. However, if you do this method, you cannot use a point on the equation of the axis. So any of those 17, sorry, yeah, any of those points with a y value of 17 would not work. You needed to use the maximum or the minimum. The reason why, if it's in the middle, you don't know if it's then going up or down. And mathematically, you can't figure that out. So then it won't know what to use. For example, if you used negative 180 and 17 in a cosine, in this cosine equation, you would get D is zero you would still have A is positive 4. But as I just explained, that doesn't work because 0 is at the minimum. But when you're at your, at your axis, you don't know if you're then going up or down. Mathematically, you can't find that out. But if you're at the bottom, mathematically, you know you're going up. And that's why the calculations will work out. So that's why you cannot use a point on the equation if you choose this method. But I already have A and D, so I'm just going to write out the equations. Y equals negative 4 sine bracket a half bracket x plus 180, because remember, negative, negative, plus 17. Meanwhile, cosine is negative 4 cos half x plus 17. Since there's no D, the brackets aren't necessary. Now, if we look at B, B involves a bit of estimation because it's not exactly on the X values at perfect points. The Y values, we can say they are. So our A value, max minus min divided by two, equals 6 minus 2 divided by 2, which equals 2. C, max plus min, divided by 2, 6 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 4. And now our period. I'm going to look at this point right here. And this point right here. So it's about ending at 3.5 and it's starting at about 0 0.4. So that gives us 3.1. 
If you had used 0 0.5, that would work, but I decided to use 0 0.4. Yeah, I don't know why, but I did. I think I've done this question before and I find that it's a little easier to work with. And now k equals, again, 360 over period. So 360 divided by 3.1, which is equal to 116.1. Now, sign. Again, our D, we got to see where it starts at its axis. And there's our axis. So that's about at 1.2. So D is 1.2. And then it continues going up. So A is still going to be positive. So positive 2. Cosine, on the other hand, you have to look at when it starts at its maximum or its minimum, which is here which is about 1.8. And again, it's, go it's its maximum, so A is going to be 2. I could have used 0 0.4, and then that would have been its minimum, and made A negative 2. That would work. And now, our equations, Y equals 2 sine bracket, 116.1 bracket x minus 1.2 bracket bracket plus 4. Well, for cosine, y equals 2 cos 116.1 x minus 1.8 bracket bracket plus 4. And I think this is why I ended up using 0 0.4 instead of 0 0.5. Because if you had used the minimum instead of the maximum, or even that 1.9 or 1.7, I think the 0 0.4 still made the numbers work out. Or even if you were doing the long way of subbing in a point, it would also work. And now example three, it tells us the amplitude is two, has a period of 180 and a maximum at zero three. Well, A is two, K, or I usually do C, so let's stick with doing C next, C. It doesn't tell you the max and min. It just tells you the maximum and the amplitude. Well, we know max plus min. Well, I guess we could find the amplitude. Oh, sorry, we could find the minimum. If the maximum's at three and the amplitude's at two, or is two units, go down two units from the maximum, you're at one, which gives us our equation of the axis, go down two more, that'll give you negative one. So our minimum is at negative one. Or you can just think of max minus the amplitude. So three minus two, which equals one. Because remember, the amplitude is the difference from the equation of the axis. So that's why you can just subtract it out from the maximum. And now we need to find K. Well, the period is 180, so 360 over 180, which is equal to two. So K equals two. Now we need the differences for sine and cosine. It starts at the maximum. So I'm gonna do cosine first. D, zero and it's at its maximum, so A is still positive. Our sine, on the other hand, this one's a little trickier because we don't have any information. 
So in this case, it may be easiest to substitute in that maximum point. So y equals a sine k bracket x minus d bracket bracket plus c. It's given us a point that is not on the axis. If it was, you would have to think it through just like we did a and b. But since it's the maximum, we can substitute in this point. 3 equals, I guess we'll use 2, sine 2 bracket 0 minus d bracket bracket plus 1. Yeah, there's a lot of brackets going on. Bring over the 1. And it becomes minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 sine 2 bracket 0 minus d. Got rid of those extra brackets since it's a 0 and not a negative. Actually, in that case, we can go a little further. I don't even need to show the 0 because it's 0. That's negative d. Now we divide by 2. We get 1 equals sine bracket negative 2d sine inverse of 1 is equal to negative 2d and I'm gonna have to kind of go up here so it gives us 90 equals negative 2d, divide by negative 2, and d equals negative 45. Which, since we're starting, since the maximum is its y-intercept, that's our cosine graph in general. And we know the cosine graph is shifted 90 degrees from the sine graph. So we could have just used that and thought, oh, the period's cut in half. So that 90 degree shift is also cut in half to 45. But subbing in that point worked as well. So then our two equations, y equals 2 sine bracket 2 bracket x plus 45 bracket bracket plus 1 or y equals 2 cos bracket 2 actually we don't even need that bracket because there is again there is no d 2x plus 1 and there you have it finding equations of sinusoidal functions very similar but there is a restriction on which points you use if you do want to sub in a point later on to find the d value